So this is a video specifically about tools for people with post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. You need to have tools. So what I want to do is just go through some of the tools that will help you know better so you can do better. And it's really important to take what I'm going to not only show you, but I'm going to write in the description below. And uh, it's very strategic that I am recording at a park where you can hear water in the background. So I am speaking above water, but the importance is what we are allowing our senses to experience. And if we're in, a, in places where we're at heightened alert all the time, our brain is in distress. And so for post-traumatic stress to be resolved, we need to retrain our brain that it is not, we're not in a threatening situation. And when we give our brain times to rest and relax, we're able to do that. We're able to give it some downtime, some R&R. &R. And it's not real, you know, rest and relaxation, it's rest and repair in this situation. R&R &R is rest and repair for our brain. So the first thing I want, and my library um, has coloring for adults, and they have it once a week. But I got this at the dollar store. It's just a coloring book. And as you can see, it's very intricate. It has very specific designs. They're very small. And the point of it is that it allows you to um, really focus in on the designs. And it could take about 15 minutes to complete. 15 minutes is what you need to be able to um, insulate yourself when you are feeling at a heightened state of alert or danger or whatever it is. And give yourself 15 minutes um, in a place of safety and security. And so, and it doesn't even mean physical. It means emotional. It means mental, psychologically heightened. So 15 minutes spent in coloring book is in a place of safety for our brains. Remember, our brains need to recover for post-traumatic stress disorder to abate. Now, there are a couple different things. One is a lot of us carry shame. Not necessarily that we did some of the most horrendous acts on the planet, but we were living contrary to what our gut or our conscience or God was telling to live by. And we have, we have residual shame or guilt about that. So also in my book, I have a great, great um, tool that recently I read the book. So I won't ever tell you, you know, to try something that I haven't found a lot of help from. So personally, so this book is called Three Free Sins, God's Not Mad at You by Steve Brown. And it's really important to understand that the title um, is very misleading. I want to tell you that up front because I was kind of turned off by the title. And I am so glad that I went through to the end. Once you get a quarter of the way into it, you understand that he's being facetious. But it's about shame and about guilt. Um, another tool for me is a journal. And this is my prayer journal. On the front, I made all these stickers that have who I am in God's eyes. I'm a Christian. I'm a professing Christian. And Christ is my Savior and Lord. He is he's the Messiah uh, and through him I have a life and through him I have abundant life and I'm able to reach out to people so reminders things that in the moment you know if I have this book with me then I can just look down and remember who I am even though the enemy is a, is attacking me so glorify thy name is is on there and we're also supposed to give him glory in all things not just good things it doesn't say glorify my name in good things it's all things because he is it's it's predictive we're giving thanks because we know he's in control and it's a way that we show that we trust him trust him is another thing that i have on there for he is good he's a good father uh, Jesus died for us, you know, Yeshua, our Savior, our Messiah, he died for us so that we would be free from sin that leads to death. Uh, and a reminder that is very profound for me is that I will never be alone. I carry that knowledge with me in my heart uh, throughout every minute of every day. I know, I know, like, 
know like I'm breathing oxygen. I know that that there are clouds above me. I know that there are people around me and that there are ducks swimming behind me. I can see all these things. I know that I am not alone, that the Spirit is with me, dwelling with me. Uh, he loves me. John 3, 16 is, it's, it's such a profound verse for me. My daughter memorized it and it just, it just sits with me, you know, that, that even a small child can put something good into her heart and keep it with her so when the struggles of the day, when the temptations of the day strike, God can use that for her to remind her that she's loved. And in it, you know, I, I have, you know, things that are special to me. This is a rose given to me by my niece um, for my birthday last year. Uh, I also have, you know, very, you know, this one is a prayer to overcome fear. I have an app on my phone um, that gives me a category for all the verses in the Bible that that correlate to certain topics. So uh, correlate for addiction, for fear, for courage, needing courage, for, did I say fear already? <laughs> That's kind of the root of most things. So. There's a story that I heard, and um, I've mentioned it in the book that I, I wrote, and uh, it has yet to be published, but it's in there, and it's, it's, it's in so many places in the media that all you have to do is, there are two wolves constantly at battle. If you type that in to any search engine, it'll give you the rest of it, but the correct information anyway. I'll sum it up for you. There are two wolves and they are constantly battling each other. One is hope and light and the other is darkness and despair or fear and despair. Now the question comes, which wolf will win? And it's something for you to internalize. It's the wolf you feed. So when you close your eyes and do a self-analysis, which wolf are you feeding? And these tools that I'm showing you today, they are proof positive uh, purposes for feeding the right wolf. In that, I will show you some magazines that, that you can get. Now, I got these at my local library. They were old subscriptions, which really doesn't matter. They're selling them for 10 cents a piece. One is called Experience Life, and it gives you a lot of tools. This one, right off the bat, uh, Page 62, kick the anger habit. <laughs> Page 46, for the love of dark chocolate. Dark chocolate's good for our brain, just so you know. Oh, speaking of which, brain food, nutrition, and mental illness. Page 41, we have to feed our brain, not only with nutritious foods, but also with nutritious and nurturing information. Uh, let me say, why the underdog wins by Malcolm Gladwell. Timothy Galeway, Galeway, Work Your Inner Game, Mark Hyman, MD, Conquer Food Addiction. So there's a lot of good information. So I have a few of those. Feed your brain in other ways. I'm a fan of science. I've mentioned earlier on that I used to be a science teacher and that I love teaching. You know, this is one of my, this is one of my passions is to share what I've learned. So popular science is one of my, um, Go to magazines when I'm sitting in a in a doctor's office. This one is rewiring the brain. There is so much information just in that title for you to understand that if there is a title, rewiring the brain, they have proven that it is possible. And I've talked about neuroplasticity in the past. Dr. Daniel Amen. He is one of the leading doctors that are talking about how to rewire the brain, how to get parts of the brain that are lagging behind, that aren't releasing the chemicals, hormones, whatnot, that they're supposed to because we're not working them right way. We're not using our brain uh, the way it was designed. Well, I mean, this is my son's, but just to show that I, I like to keep it in, this is uh, about trains. So this is for train finance. Well, enthusiastic, I guess, not fanatics. He's not a fanatic, he just went to one. But anyway, it's just something to distract you from the thoughts in your head. Another thing is, now this is from within Popular Science. 
but nature, I mean, hello, how can you look at this and not be over, overcome, captivated by the beauty of the picture? Scotland, you know, just put yourself, give yourself a mental vacation. And you can do that by indulging in some books from the library, um, some photo journals. Amazing. I love photo journals because it's so nurturing and soothing to the soul. Another popular science. Uh, I have, oh, this is a Wired. I'm also kind of a techie nerd. So uh, this is Wired magazine. And just about how engineers, artists, science, and the world's leading architects are building the urban future. It's interesting, you know, it, again, gets us out of our own heads. Another popular science. Uh, this is actually for teaching. You know, this is about teaching about voting. So, you know, I've, old, habits, old habits die hard, which for me, I'm talking about teaching uh, and collecting information, even though I don't teach in a public school anymore. I still teach and it's in my, it's in my soul. But old habits dying hard, that also goes with post-traumatic stress disorder. We have habitual tendencies towards heightened alerts, heightened, just not being able to put our guard down, staying in situations actually where your guard is not down. And post-traumatic stress disorder is very taxing on the brain. So some of these tools, like I'm saying, the rest are actually just choo-choo trains and more experienced life. Um, two more tools. Chicken soup books. They really do. It says it right here. 101 stories to open the heart and rekindle the spirit. That is so true. <laughs> so true. There are good things happening in the world. And I hope that you recognize that, that this is one of them. What I'm doing is not something new. I mean, there are a lot of people who are trying to help others through YouTube, through one-on-one. -on -one. They're not being paid for it. It's nurturing to them. It, and that's, that's why I do it, because I was called to do this. I was led to doing this through going through the experience that many people have. So the next and final item in my bag, my uh, goodies bag, well, I'm gonna show you the bag real quick. It's the fruits of the spirit. So Galatians 5, uh, 22 and 23. It's really important because if you want the fruits of the spirit, which are love, kindness, peace, goodness, self-control, gentleness, joy, patience, faithfulness, if you want those, there is a source and you can go to that. My Bible's too big to fit in this bag and the bag's falling apart, so I do have that in my go-to. It's my daily routine. But the last thing that I want to show you is about, it, it, um, it really hits home on that garbage in, garbage out. It's not only what you put in your mind, but like through TV, radio, media, uh, but it's about what you put in your body. So if you're putting chips and high salt High, like really, really high sugar, which a lot of people don't know because they're not reading the nutrition uh, labels on the back. If you're not taking account of what you're putting in your body, if you're not staying hydrated, our brains don't function so well. So just to let you know, post-traumatic stress is basically a nervous breakdown of the brain. And there are tools, like I've gone through just a very, very small arsenal of what you can do to overcome post-traumatic stress disorder. There are things that, that they feed the soul and they help you recover. Finding somebody that you can speak to who has overcome it is really important. So for instance, if you have uh, been in any sort of military combat and you have post-traumatic stress disorder from that, at the VW, is that right? Um, at the veterans clinics. There are people who have overcome post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I have overcome psychogenic non-epileptic non seizures, PNES or NEAD, that was a symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder. So of course, to overcome PNES, I had to overcome the trauma of my past to be able to forgive and to let it go. So there are a lot of people who can help you. Pastors can help you. Um, 
Of course, there are psychologists that are specifically trained in helping people overcome post-traumatic stress disorder. And if you're seeing somebody and they have not successfully aided in helping somebody overcome PTSD, then I strongly urge that you reevaluate because that should be a goal. PTSD is not intended to be a lifelong disorder. It is meant to highlight something that needs to be addressed. You went through something and it was traumatic. It was absolutely heart-wrenching and you didn't have the tools to be able to process it. But it doesn't mean you stop trying to process it. You process it, you forgive, you forgive yourself when necessary and then you move on. So these are some tools. Like I said, if you want to do better, you have to know better. Please use some of the tools that I've provided. Use the internet. It is a wealth of information. If you look in quieting your mind, um, also um, mindfulness, you know, just being in nature, just take a page out of my book. Spend a day at the park. Watch the birds. Take your mind out of your life and just be. I just want to say God bless you all and thank you for watching.